Welcome back, my friends. I am here with Julia Heaven Street. She is the executive director for the Kim Foundation. Julia, thank you for joining me. It's good to see you. Yes, you too. I wish we were in person, but I'm getting used to this Zoom stuff. So yeah. thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're welcome. Well, first of all, the Kim Foundation is celebrating 20 years this year. That, to me, that's just hard to believe. Um, yeah. But let's talk a little bit about you do so such important work in our community. Um, tell us about the mission and, and what is the Kim Foundation? Absolutely. Well, thank you. And yes, it, it is hard for us to believe as well, 20 yeah. years. And, um, you know, we focus on mental health and suicide prevention, our mission being to serve as a supportive resource and compassionate voice for lives touched by mental illness and suicide. And so really engaging the community around activities that do just that and educating and, and really starting that conversation, breaking down the stigma around mental illness and suicide and, and helping those impacted most, either individuals who are directly impacted um, through family or themselves or, um, you know, those who just want more information and resources on this topic. Yeah. And give us a little story about how, how the Kim Foundation actually started. Yeah, so the Courtnage family, Larry Courtnage and Kathy Courtnage are our um, founders and board chairs. And Larry Courtnage's daughter, Kim, um, suffered from mental illness and she was in and out of facilities um, and really struggled with her recovery process. At that time, um, you know, Larry had gone to court to become her medical power of attorney to be included in her treatment and release and just care and recovery journey. And, um, you know, unfortunately at that time, medical power of attorney wasn't as well known as we it is now yeah. and wasn't maybe taken as seriously and she was in and out of facilities and unfortunately at one point when she was released from a facility took her own life and so at that time the family vowed you know when they're able to give back in a meaningful way this would be their focus to really help other families struggling with similar situations um, families and individuals to really just help ease that um, pain and process for them and just to serve as a beacon of hope for anyone else who's experiencing a similar loss. Yeah. And I have to think, I mean, 20 years ago, I think uh, mental health, um, I, there's a lot to it. And, you know, there's certainly so much more to be done. But 20 years ago, it wasn't even half of what it is today. Yeah, yeah. And they actually had lost Kim before that. It was just at that point in their own grief that they were able to move forward. So the foundation started in 2001 and and really some of the early work centered on um, LB 1083, which was a state legislature bill that moved our mental health services from institutions to more community based services. And so that was a huge yeah. focus in those early days. And so just to think in 20 years that, you know, now, you know, we try and avoid a as much as possible, putting people into institutions and the regional centers and really wrap them around with services and care in their community and um, with the people that help them thrive and live a successful life. So things have changed significantly, but you're right, there's still a long way to go. Yeah. And I think mental health, just it, 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 there's so many different levels to it. It's not just one thing. I mean, there's yep. this, whether it's, you know, depression and I mean, there's just so many different levels that we, I mean, yeah. you know, a lot of us are impacted by it on one way, one way or another. So, yeah. And I think some people, you know, think of when we talk about mental health or mental illness, they think about what they see in the movies or in the media that's usually portrayed on the most severe um, end of the spectrum. And all of us have mental health in some fashion, you know, and it may Absolutely. be good one day and it may not be so good the next day. And so it's really important for people to understand that we all play a role in this. We all are impacted by it in some way or another, and we can all work to improve our mental health and do things that we need to do to stay well and healthy. Yeah. And I think too, even over the last 18 months with the pandemic and dealing with COVID-19, I mean, that was even brought to the forefront even more so from, from, you know, your kids, you know, to, you know, per, me personally, you know, yep. you're, you're, you're living life in a different way that, um, you know, so, yeah. well, one of the things that's coming up, um, that's really exciting in honor of your, you know, your 20th anniversary, you do have, um, an event every year, but this is coming up on November 4th and you have a pretty spectacular speaker this year. So tell us a little bit about him. 
Yeah, we're really excited to culminate these 20 years with a celebration at Embassy La Vista on November 4th. As you said, it's a luncheon. And our keynote speaker is Zach Williams, who is the son of Robin Williams. And we're just so excited to bring him to Omaha. And he opens up about his story, um, his father's story. You know, from the outside, everyone saw Robin Williams as this comedian and actor and he was doing so well and funny and no one understood he really was suffering um, from depression. And so Zach opens up about their family story, um, about his own personal story. He also battled um, mental illness and continues to battle it each day and then also substance use. And so he talks about what recovery looks like for him, how he's overcome some of his challenges and just the grief that he had from losing his father and take that into serving as an advocate and really opening up about his story. Um, and he's very transparent. You know, we all saw one side of Robin Williams. And so to learn kind of the back end in that family, mm -hmm. um, those family ties and that family story is pretty incredible. So we're excited to bring him. Um, he does a wonderful job. He also has his own company that focuses on anxiety and depression and, and things that have helped him in his recovery. And so he'll talk a little bit about that. And we've had many generous sponsors. You know, I think everyone, as you mentioned, COVID mental health has really come to the forefront for a lot of people. And so to see our corporate partners step up and realize this is important, you know, and, and this is a huge anniversary for us as well. So it's going to be a huge community event, um, you know, so far in person, we may offer a blended version as well, depending on what happens. That was going to be a, qu a, no, a question <laughs> of mine. Yeah. Yes, of course, in this day and age, you know, we, we will stay flexible and determine, you know, best way the health and um, wellness of everyone is most important. Sure. So as of now, it is still in person, um, but with the potential of adding a hybrid mix of that virtual option for those who want to stay home as well. So we're excited. So um, so as, as the air date of this is September 28th, are you still looking for corporate sponsors? Yeah, absolutely. Anyone who's interested, registration is live. If it's just an individual or a table purchase that wants to come to the event, tables can be up to 10 people. Um, so that that registration is live on our website, thekimfoundation.org. And, um, and certainly corporate sponsors are still um, being accepted. And we have some great opportunities for meet and greets with Zach and different things for corporate sponsors to really highlight, um, you know, them because we want to show those companies in our community who prioritize mental health. So so they can email me directly. I think my contact information will be available um, or through the website as well. So okay. anyone who's interested in attending on November 4th, we're excited to have you. And so what are, so we were talking, you know, before we, we started recording that September is um, Suicide um, Prevention Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, to where, you know, a lot of time, I mean, it's kind of a month where a lot of um, efforts go into to bringing awareness. Um, but Obviously, this is a, a, a 12, you know, 365 day a year conversation that we're having with people. And how can people get involved or how can people support you year round? Yeah, absolutely. So you're right. Suicide is not something that's just... Um, you know, isolated to the month of September. We are fortunate that, you know, it's highlighted in that month nationally, but our hope is that we would encourage people to really focus on suicide prevention throughout the year, just as you said, 365 days and mental health in general, because a lot of suicides are preventable if we can um, intervene early and make sure people are supported and get the resources they need. And so it's important for our community to understand that each of us can play a role in saving lives from suicide. Each of of us may be impacted by mental health at some point or mental illness at some point in our lives. And so knowing the warning signs to look for, empowering yourself to have that knowledge yeah. so that when it is um, relevant to you, you know what to look for either in yourself or loved ones. And then most importantly, if you identify those signs, then what are the next steps? What help is out there? Because our hope is that people understand they're never alone, even though that's a feeling that many people who are suffering from mental illness experience is that they're alone and no one would understand and they don't reach out for help. That's the hardest part is taking that step to reach out. So the earlier we can have that conversation with people, the more resources we make available, the better off and the more lives we're going to save, certainly. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Well, um, Julia, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, you know, such an important subject and um, excited for your luncheon on November 4th and being able to, you know, hear from, from a gentleman that, that was very close, you know, to a loved one that, that committed suicide and somebody that I know most of us probably hold near and dear to our, our hearts yeah. and, and are familiar with all of his work. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, thanks again for joining me today. And I look yeah. forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, Andy. Bye.